Welcome to iLecture Online and here's a problem dealing with related lates in calculus that's a little bit more challenging. So this is a very good example. Let's read it. It says here that we have a rocket that's riding ver vertically and being tracked by a radar that's five miles from the launch pad. How fast is the rocket rising when it is at an altitude of four miles and the distance between the rocket and the radar is increasing at 2,000 miles per hour? All right, to get a good feel for this problem, let's make a nice little diagram. So we have a launch pad, we have a rocket that is rising vertically upward. We want to know the rate of change in the height. We want to know how fast it's rising. So how about they want to know the dh dt is equal to question mark. Um, uh, maybe dh, dy. Let's use a more traditional variable. I'm going to use a y instead. So I'm going to find the dy dt, the rate of change in the height with respect to time. That's what we're looking for. We have a tracking radar over here. There's a, a radar station that's tracking that's five miles away. So this distance right here is five miles. So let's call this distance x, five miles away. And at some point, the rocket has an altitude of four miles. So this distance at some point will be y equals four miles, like so. And then they're telling us that the distance between the rocket and the radar, this distance right here is changing over time. So that's the hypotenuse, right? Hmm, we need a letter for the hypotenuse. Let's, um, how about h? How about the dh dt? The distance in the hypotenuse res respect to time is changing at a rate of 2,000 miles per hour. Okay, so that's a given. They want to know this. This is given. Uh, they know that this is five miles away and the rocket is four miles up. So, where do we start? We need an equation that relates the hypotenuse distance to the height distance or the y distance. So we have ourselves a triangle right here. So we have ourselves a triangle, like so. This is the hypotenuse, this is x, this is y. So using the uh, hypotenuse theory, we can say that x squared plus y squared equals h squared. So we have x squared plus y squared equals h squared. So now you say, well, that gives me three variables, x, y, and h, but one of those three stays constant x is a constant, so that's not a variable, so we have a relationship here between y and h. So if we now take the derivative of both sides of that equation, with respect to time, we're, we're going to get a dy dt and we're going to get a dh dt that we can then relate to each other. So let's do that. We take the ddt of the left side, x squared plus y squared, and the ddt of the right side. A little ahead of myself here, the dt of h squared. And when we do that, realizing that x is going to be a constant and the ddt of a constant is zero, we end up with 2y dy dt is equal to 2h dh dt. All right. Now, uh, since we're looking for dy dt, we're going to solve that for dy dt, and we can already see that the twos cancel on both sides, which means if I then simplify my equation and take the y, bring it to the other side, I can say that dy dt is equal to h over y dh dt. And let me get out of the way here so you can see how that's done, right? So we took our equation here that we got from taking the derivative respect to time and both sides of the equation, we end up with dy dt is h over y dh dt. Now, we want to know what dy dt is when y is 4 miles, when h is, well, we don't know yet what h is. So in order to solve the equation, not only do we need to know y, we also need to know h. And dh dt is given. So how do we find h? Well, we take our equation right here and solve this equation for h. We can say that h is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we can plug that in our equation right there. And then our equation becomes dy dt is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared 
divided by y times dh dt. That enables us now to find out what dy dt is, because now we're going to solve for dy dt when y is 4 and x is 5. So we have dy dt when y is 4 and x equals 5. Of course, x equals 5, it's a constant. So that's never going to change, but let's plug in those values. So this is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 4 squared, because we want to know what the dy dt is when y is equal to 4, divided by y, which is 4. And then we multiply it times dh dt, which is given to us as 2,000 miles per hour. So that's 2,000, like so. And I think we're going to need a calculator for that. So let me grab my calculator here. So we have a 25 plus 16, that is 41. Take the square root of 41, divided by 4, and multiply it times 2,000. And what do we get? Round it off, we get 3,200, and of course that was in terms of miles per hour, because 2,000 was in miles per hour. So we know that the dy dt, at the time that they want us to find it, is equal to 3,200 miles per hour. So that's kind of an interesting problem. Imagine that there's a rocket taking off. You have a radar station five miles away. The radar station can measure the change in the distance between the radar and the rocket, which it was measured to be 2,000 miles per hour, knowing that the rocket is at a height of four miles, because we can probably figure out what the angle is here, knowing how far away it is. We know how high the rocket is, and we want to know at that moment how fast the rocket is moving, and of course, that's the equation that allows us to do that. So pretty, pretty interesting and pretty relevant. Of course, you'd want to program in that into a computer, and the computer in the radar would, of course, automatically calculate that. But if you ever get a job as an engineer, and you need to write programs for the computers that are in the radar, that are tracking the missile or the rocket, whatever you're tracking, you need to be able to figure out these types of equations so that at all times the radar system can figure out how fast the rocket is moving. So it's a very relevant problem here to real life. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Let's see if I can come up with some more examples.